Is NASA's SLS rocket the answer to space exploration the way the agency makes it seem? Or is it just another overpriced political rocket soon to be kept in a museum? Be sure to watch to the end to find out our final verdict. The future of NASA's SLS rocket has been in a single state of ongoing debate for years as to whether the rocket is really worth the amount of money poured into it. Many have even gone as far as stating that the project should be abandoned at this point and whatever's left from its obscenely large budget should be put into more worthwhile projects. Although the SLS is a pretty big deal where spaceflight is involved, we understand that not everybody's up to date on what it actually is, so let's break it down a bit. NASA's SLS rocket, also known as the Space Launch System, is a super heavy expendable launch vehicle that has been in development by the agency since 2011. The rocket is a towering piece of engineering with the main objective of replacing the retired space shuttle and putting man back on the moon with the Artemis missions. Due to its sheer size, build, and overall mission objective, SLS is commonly compared with SpaceX's Starship, which basically has the same objective of reaching the moon and Mars, but unlike the SLS, is reusable. The SLS comprises different configurations and stages, all of which are meant for different phases of the Artemis missions. Rocket Configurations and Missions The first SLS launch vehicle, called Block 1, stands at more than 320 feet tall and will be able to lift more than 59,000 pounds of uncrewed payload into orbit. It will be powered by four RS-25 liquid propellant engines, as well as twin five-segment solid rocket boosters, in addition to the Orion capsule. The Block 1 will ferry over a dozen small satellites on the first Artemis missions, which is slated to at least four to six weeks. The second configuration of the SLS, called the Block 1B, will be a crewed launch vehicle able to lift more than 83,000 pounds of payload into space. The Block 1B is also capable of launching with simply just cargo payload, such as large exploration equipment needed to establish a sustainable human base both on the Moon and Mars. The Block 1B will be used in the second Artemis mission carrying several astronauts on the Orion capsule on a double trip around the planet. The next and final configuration for the SLS will be the Block 2, a workhorse launch vehicle able to put over 9 million pounds of thrust, making it the most powerful rocket in the world. Block 2 will be designed for use as a multi-purpose launch vehicle able to lift over 100,000 pounds of both human and cargo payload into deep space. But although the SLS would be used as the launch vehicle for the third Artemis mission, NASA announced that it would be SpaceX's Starship that would be doing the honors of landing astronauts on the moon. Now, this is where another round of concerns regarding the efficiency of the SLS was raised. It has been stipulated that since the SLS isn't designed to actually land on the moon and would use Starship instead, why spend billions using such an expensive rocket that's only good for heavy-duty liftoffs and orbital flybys? Seeing as how NASA would obviously have to wait for Starship to become fully operational before it can proceed with Artemis 3, why not just use Starship for all three Artemis missions instead, and at a fraction of the cost? For those of us that might not be versed with the recurring concerns of cost regarding the SLS, let's clear the air on that a little bit. Development and Launch Cost So, NASA's been developing the SLS since 2011, and it was initially projected to be operational by 2016, but of course, several delays have pushed the fate of the rocket this far. But to date, the agency has spent a whopping $23 billion on the development of the SLS, with not even a single orbital test flight to show for it. This was revealed by NASA's Inspector General Paul Martin at a House Science Committee hearing, where he further stated that the price for a single launch on the SLS has considerably risen as well. It was initially projected in 2011 that a single launch on the SLS would cost around $500 million, which was already incredibly expensive in itself. Fast forward to 2020, and this launch price has gone up considerably to a staggering $2 billion. Now, according to Paul Martin, even that isn't feasible anymore, and the current estimates put a single launch cost at $4.1 billion. When asked about the possibility of the launch costs getting cheaper as the rocket nears completion, Martin revealed that the agency can't guarantee that it will. Is Starship cheaper? For comparison, SpaceX is estimated to have spent within the range of $5 to $10 billion on the development of Starship. Although these numbers are highly speculative, as SpaceX remains a private company and isn't bound by law to release its expenditure to the public, regardless, there is still a considerable $13 billion gap between both programs. 
albeit the SLS is slightly larger and has more power than Starship. Now, you might be asking why NASA has spent that much on the development of a single rocket, however ambitious its plans are. Well, the answer is NASA didn't, Congress did. Politics behind SLS funding While NASA is responsible for drafting out the proposed budget, it's up to Congress to approve said budget and further decide how the contracts will be awarded to contractors. For the SLS, Congress meticulously set up costs plus contracts for the various contractors and private companies in charge of building the numerous parts that make up the launch vehicle. The way cost plus contracts work is that the government agrees to pay the cost of work done as well as any and every additional fee incurred in the development of the program. In other words, if any unforeseen delays shoot up the cost, the government and not the contractor get the foot of these extra bills. Private companies that benefit from these multi-billion dollar cost plus contracts are primarily Boeing, which holds the largest chunk of SLS's budget, as they're in charge of building the rocket's core stages as well as the avionics system that controls the rocket during flight. Other major companies include Lockheed Martin and Northrop Grumman. Now, these large cost plus contracts are common practice when research projects are done, but the problem is that most of the SLS's key components like the RS-25 engines and core stages are recovered and refurbished parts from the retired space shuttle. As such, these parts don't necessarily warrant any real research as much as major improvements and upgrades. So these cost plus contracts that have led to the high price tag on the SLS are nothing more than ways for members of Congress to keep their constituents happy and employed, and here's why. The SLS project currently uses more than 3,000 different suppliers from every single state in the US, the majority of which are in Texas, California, Florida, and Alabama, where Boeing has its operations. So members of Congress would ideally want to keep their constituents happy by keeping the ball going on this SLS program. This has led to the SLS being tagged more of a political power play than a behemoth for space exploration. In addition, Starship, which is now under contract with NASA, is currently working on a fixed cost contract, which is ironic, as Starship is more of a revolutionary research rocket than the SLS. This fixed cost contract means that, unlike Boeing, SpaceX will have to cover the cost of any delays or additional costs it may incur. What is the fate of the SLS? The major cause of debate with the SLS now lies in the fact that although the rocket seems to be nearing completion and has just been rolled out, a $4.1 billion launch cost is still unthinkable for an expandable rocket that isn't reusable. Many have suggested that the project should be scrapped and the intended launch budget put into Starship instead. But there are obvious downsides to this suggestion, some of which include the fact that NASA will be totally dependent on the privately owned spacecraft for its launches. Also, Starship still hasn't performed its orbital flight yet and could very well fail for all we know. And then there's the stint with the FAA and the question of building its own launch pad at Boca Chica. What do you think NASA should do? Let us know in the comments below and we'll see you in the next video. In all honesty, the SLS doesn't deserve all the hate it's been getting and the rocket has many aspects with which it shines. For instance, the launch system of the SLS follows a rather dynamic design which opens the window for the rocket to evolve. The launch vehicle has a rather flexible configuration that allows NASA engineers the freedom to upgrade or otherwise adapt the rocket to unforeseen scenarios and future launch missions. The SLS is so dynamic it comes with a variety of configurations, three to be exact, all of which have unique capabilities that aren't seen in any other rocket today.